Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, guess I'm the last one before the coffee break, so I will try to make it quick. Uh, my name is Zhang Ziwei, and I am an undergraduate student from Tsinghua University, China. And our, our lab's name is called MAN, which means Media and Network. So I'm very honored to be here today. Uh, the topic I'm going to talk about is asymmetric transitivity preserving graph embedding. And this is a joint work with Simon Fraser University. So first, let me introduce some background. As we all know, it's the era of big data. And many data are in the format of graph, for example, social network and web hyperlink. On this graph data, we have many applications, such as link prediction and classification. But between graph data and these applications, graph data representation plays a very important role, since the volume of data is usually very large. And graph embedding is one such paradigm. So what is graph embedding? Well, Basically, it tries to project nodes of a graph into a vector space while preserving the structure and the inherent property of the graph. So in other words, we want to use vectors to represent nodes. And this is an example of graph embedding. On the left is the input graph, and on the right is the projection in low dimensional space. It has several advantages. For example, fast computation of node similarity we can utilize vector-based machine learning techniques and facilitate parallel computing. So graph embedding has aroused much research attention recently. So before we, before we move on, let's review some existing graph embedding methods. Lai, published at WWW 2015, explicitly preserved first order and second order proximity between nodes. And some of you may have heard deep work uh, published at KDD 2014, two years ago. Uh, they used random walk on graphs and borrows the skip gram model from NLP to do graph embedding. There are many other works, but one thing they have in common is that most methods focus on undirected graph. But you know, uh, directed graph is a very common and popular kind of data. For example, in Twitter, the follow relation is directed. And we find that one critical property in directed graph is called asymmetric transitivity. So I think we all heard of transitivity, right? Uh, but we find that transitivity is asymmetric in directed graph. Uh, what this means? Uh, it means if there is a directed edge from A to B and from B to C, then there is probably a directed edge from A to C, but not C to A. And this is important in capturing the unique structure of directed graph, and especially useful in graph inference. So is it true in real data? Here we did some data validation in Tencent Weibo and Twitter. Here we plot two users' connection probability versus their number of two hop passes. And we can see that when forward, they are positively related, but when backward, they are not. So that means asymmetric transitivity indeed exists, and they may be ubiquitous. So it's important that we consider them. So one challenging problem is how to incorporate asymmetric transitivity in graph embedding method. Uh, the biggest problem is uh, embedding space is usually a metric space, and metric space is symmetric. Uh, in other words, if there exists a directed edge from A to C, then there exists a direct edge from C to A. So these methods are in conflict with the asymmetric transitivity we observe. Uh, recently, there are some work trying to solve this asymmetric problem in directed graph embedding. For example, Line has a version to deal with directed graph, and PPE, another method published at CCOM 2009, they can deal with directed graph. But basically, they use two vectors to represent each node. Uh, to be more explicit, denote u as source vector and v as target vector. Then if there is a directed edge from a to b, then ua is similar to vb, but not vice versa. So va is not similar to ub. It seems that they solved the asymmetric problem. The new, the new problem is they may not be fully transitive. Why? If there exists another edge from B to C, from asymmetric transitivity perspective, there should be a directed edge from A to C. But we can see that these two vectors 
prevent this from happening. UA is similar to VB, UB is similar to VC, but UA may not be similar to VC. So, so far we have talked about two kinds of existing methods. The first one is transitive, but not asymmetric. The other one is asymmetric, but not transitive. So what can we do? Intuitively, we want to find a new similarity metric to account for the asymmetric transitivity. So what's the key property of asymmetric transitivity? Uh, first is asymmetry, which means it's not symmetric in directed graph, right? Very simple. And then we describe the transitivity as two parts. First is uh, if there are more directed passes from, uh, from one node to another node, then their similarity is larger. Second, if the paths are shorter, then the similarity is larger. Uh, take these three examples. Uh, if we want to calculate node A to C's directed similarity, we think the blue, uh, compare the green one with the blue one, we think the green one has a larger similarity because there exist more passes. And if we compare blue one with the yellow one, we think the blue one has a larger similarity because the path is shorter. So what measurements can meet uh, the above three requirements? So some research, we find that uh, high order proximity can meet all these three requirements. Uh, for example, CAS or rooted page rank. So our intuition is, we can directly model asymmetric transitivity using high order proximity. Take CAS index, for example, it's a combination of paths of different lenses with a decaying constant on the lens. Uh, take this graph, for example. Uh, although V1, V6, and V1, V5 are not directly connected, we can see they are likely to connect from asymmetric transitivity perspective. So we can calculate their CAS index, and it turns out to be similar to our intuition. Uh, their similarity is larger than zero, but not as large as those who are directly connected. And with more passes, uh, similarity is larger. What's more, we can see that CAS index is also directed. So it meets all our requirements. And this is a showcase of using high order proximity to do graph embedding while preserving the asymmetric transitivity. First, we calculate their CAS index, then we use two vectors to preserve them. From math perspective, this is a low rank decomposition problem. For those of you who are familiar with math, you may recall SVD, or singular value decomposition, is the solution. So is the problem solved? The answer is no, because from the formula, we can see that this similarity is not the same as adjacent matrix, but a high order proximity. So although original matrix may be sparse, this similarity is not. So, and from both time complexity and space complexity, directly using SVD is not acceptable. So there is a big challenge in how to solve this problem. Uh, in order to, assolve, uh, to solve the overall problem, we try to formalize high order proximity. CAS index, as we have talked about, is a summation of different passes. By some simple mass derivation, we can represent it as the, this new formula. And we find many other high order proximity can also be represented very similarly. So we have derived a general form of high order proximity, which is the inverse of a matrix times another matrix. And these two matrices are polynomial of adjacency matrix or its variant. And we summarize them in this table. So what's the usefulness of this general form? Well, this is our problem formulation and the general form we just derived. To solve this, we use a math theorem called generalized SVD, and these are the math details. But basically, what it says is that we can directly decompose the inverse of a matrix times another matrix, which without actually calculating the inverse. So it kind of just what we need to solve our problem. And if we don't need to actually calculate the inverse, we can use an iterative approach to solve this problem. And the time complexity is O k squared times L times M. K is the embedding dimension, L is iteration, they are kind of constant, and M is edge number. So we can find that 
the time complexity is linear with respect to the volume of data, which means our algorithm is very scalable and they are suitable for large-scale data. So basically, our algorithm has the ability to handle very, very large graph, and which shall be shown later in our experiment. So, uh, and since this is a well-established math problem, we can derive an upper bound for the approximation error, so the accuracy is guaranteed. Put everything together, we call our algorithm HOPE, means, which means high-order proximity preserved embedding, and this is the algorithm framework. Basically, we input an adjacent matrix, embedding dimension, and which high-order proximity you to use. Then we use the general form and generalized SVD to calculate the embedding vectors. In this way, we can preserve asymmetric transitivity in graph embedding framework. Uh, next, we use some experiment to test our algorithm. Uh, first, let me introduce some experimental settings. We use one syntactic data set and three real world data set, which include one citation network and two social networks. Uh, the statistics of the data set are listed here. Uh, first two data sets are relatively small and the, last, uh, the two social networks are large, contain, containing millions of nodes and edges. We use three different kinds of tasks to test our algorithm. First is high order approximation, approximate approximation, which means we want to see how well can our embedded vectors approximate this high order proximity. Our second task is graph reconstruction, which means how well can embedded vectors capture the information in training set. Our last task is inference. It has two parts, link prediction and vertex recommendation. Link prediction means we want to use our embedded vectors to predict meeting, missing edges. Uh, vertex recommendation, which is to see how well can embedded vectors recommend vertices for each node is similar to link prediction, but measured from another perspective. And we compare our algorithm with two kinds of state-of-the-art baselines. First kind is graph embedding method, for example, PPE, L uh, line, deep work, uh, which I have introduced before. We also compare our algorithm with two task-specific algorithms, common neighborhood and admic adar. So uh, next are the experimental results. Our first task is high-order approximation. approximation. Uh, since calculating the real high-order proximity is very time-consuming, so we only did this in two small data sets, and there are the results. Uh, vertical axis is error, and red is our algorithm. We can see that our algorithm hope achieves much smaller RMIC error than baseline across different data sets and different high-order proximities especially for cats, which is in the first column, uh, we achieve nearly one order of magnitude smaller error. Uh, this means generalized SVD in our algorithm hope indeed achieves a good approximation. And I want to emphasize the differences between our algorithm and baseline algorithm, PPE. Uh, we kind of have the similar objective function, but we use the general form and the generalized SVD to solve it. Uh, PPE, however, use sub-block of the uh, similarity matrix to solve. So it turns out our algorithm uh, indeed achieves much better results. Uh, the second task is graph reconstruction. The vertical axis is precision and red is, algor is our algorithm. So we can see that our algorithm, again, outperforms all state-of-the-art baselines. We achieve at least 50% improvement in some k. This means our embedded vectors successfully capture the information of training sets. Uh, the third task is link prediction. As before, vertical axis is, uh, is, uh, is precision and red is our algorithm. So we can see that our algorithm again outperforms all baselines. We achieve at least 100% improvement at some specific k. This task means our, our algorithm not only capture the information of training set, but also has good inference ability. And this inference is ability is based on the asymmetric transitivity I have talked earlier. Uh, our last task is vertex recommendation. The first row in the table is our algorithm. 
basically we can conclude uh, our algorithm also uh, outperforms all these lines. To be more concrete, MAP at 10 achieves at least 88% improvement, and MAP at 50 achieves 81% improvement. So our algorithm indeed does pretty well on all these experiment. Okay, to summarize what we have done. Uh, first, we propose using high order proximity to solve the challenging problem of asymmetric transitivity in directed graph embedding. Uh, precisely, we derive a general form covering multiple commonly used high order proximity, which enable the solution of generalized SVD, which is linear with respect to graph size and has theoretical guaranteed accuracy. Uh, we also did many experiments on one syntactic and three real world data sets, which proved that our algorithm hope consistently and significantly outperforms all state of the art baselines. And we has pretty large improvement in some tasks. So that's all. Uh, thanks for listening. Any questions? <laughs>